Hi everybody, it's Lori from Cut and Paste. If you're joining us here live on Facebook, welcome. If you uh, waited and watched this on YouTube later, welcome as well. Um, we're gonna wait just a minute for everybody to join us. I know we've got, I think, 15 people um, signed up for this class, though we may not get all of them today. Um, but you can let us know if you're here. I know some of the kids' names of who's joining us. I don't know everybody's, um, so let me know. And in just a couple of minutes, we'll get started. I hope everybody's enjoying the great weather today and that you weren't stuck inside doing homework all day long. Sounds good. You may have noticed we've switched where we're filming. We're now back at the studio um, because <laughs> there's better Wi-Fi here. So hopefully we won't have the problems that we had last week with the galaxy painting. While people are joining, I will go ahead and scooch us in so that you can see the canvas a little better. Um, feel free to say hi as you join in. Why is it not? There we go. Now it's focused. Cool. We'll give just another minute. Yeah. It's just now three, so we'll wait a few more minutes as people jump in. I know some of the names of people who are joining us today. I don't know all of them. Let's see, I know we've got Emily and Beatrice, Isla, Eva, Chloe, Olivia, Nat, and Nora. And I know we've got a couple more. So let us know if you're here. We've got Isla and I forget Flora's uh, daughter's name. Beatrice. Beatrice is here as well. And it's Melissa back here in the background, so just if you guys have questions, I'm here in the comments, just let me know. Melissa's joining us again today to help us film. Um, Y'all now have a fully college graduated um, assistant here, so Woo! tell Melissa congratulations. <laughs> she has officially graduated from college now. All right, you all, I'm gonna start off with some of the beginning things. I know there are a couple of you who are brand new to canvas painting with us. Um, first off, you've got a set of three brushes. Um, when you're using these, um, I'm gonna tell you as I paint which brush I'm gonna use, um, but if you feel the need to move to a smaller brush, if I'm using uh, one that feels uncomfortable to you, you can always switch down to a smaller brush. Um, if your brush set is brand new, you'll need to fluff them a little bit because they get stiff. Sometimes if you wash them and dry them, they get a little stiff too, so fluff them up. Um, these flat edges are great for doing straight lines, and these pointier ones are great for getting into little detail bits. Um, so I'm going to be walking you through all of that. You should have all your paints with you. They are um, labeled and numbered, um, and then you should have some black and some white as well. Uh, also, you're going to need a bowl of water and you're going to need um, some paper towels to wash and dry your brush. And if you've still got some Q-tips left um, from when we um, uh, painted, use the Q-tips. Those are great for fixing little tiny smudges and errors and things like that. Um, you might want to have a blow dryer nearby. Um, I don't know that we'll necessarily be needing it today because we're going to be doing tons and tons of blending. You can tell by the mane on this course how much blending we're going to be having to do. Um, and as we're painting this, you guys feel free. If you want your mane to be darker, um, add a little more dark color to it, add a little more black in it. If you want it to be lighter, add a little more color there. Um, if you want the markings on the horse's nose to be a little bit different, maybe you've got a horse you know, um, feel free to do that. But this is what we're going to do, and we are going to start with um, the sunset here in the background and we're going to do some blending on that so we're going to work kind of quickly and just blend in paint as we go. Now as we paint up near here it's not all that important that you get uh, the paint you know in between these little lines you because you're going to be painting on top of that sunset as you go so we'll just paint kind of straight across here with our sunset and then your your mane will cover that up as we go. So here we go. 
Um, the first step we're gonna do is to start painting our sunset over here. Um, now for me, you guys um, who've painted with me before know that I turn my canvases all the time. Um, and while we're painting this sunset, it's gonna be very hard for me to be painting like this. So I'm gonna turn mine upside down. So you'll be painting upside down with me. And if you want to, if it makes it easier for you, flip your canvas over so that we can get good control with our brushes, all right? So we're gonna start. You guys, go ahead and turn your canvas upside down. That way you'll know where I'm working. I'm starting at what is normally the top of my canvas, but I've turned him upside down. And I'm gonna start with my big brush, and I'm gonna start with color number one, which is this super deep blue. It's called Ultra Deep Blue, and that's what we're gonna put at the very top of our sky. Now, while we're doing this, um, if you want the blue to come down further than I do, um, you go ahead and do that. It's really up to you how you blend as you go. I'm gonna lift mine up here just a little bit to get underneath that. And I'm gonna come right over here to this main. Again, it's not super important that you get to exactly where you want it to be um, because we are gonna be blending and then the colors that you use on that main will go over it. Now don't paint right over his ear. You aren't gonna to wanna to do that. Um, you can take your paintbrush. Remember how we do that with the flat edge? We take it right up to the edge and pull it away. And then we're gonna just kind of, you know, right along to the top of that hair. For our um, friends watching, what color is this? This is Ultra Deep Blue. It's color number one. And again, that edge doesn't have to be perfect there. I am gonna kind of smooth the line right along this ear, right there. Um, but those, the browns and whites that we use over that will be work just fine. Okay, so I've got my blue there. I am not gonna wash my brush now. I'm just gonna dry the paint off, okay? I'm just gonna take most of that blue off, but I'm not gonna wash my brush. And now I'm going straight into color two, which is called purple pizzazz. And while my blue paint is still wet, I'm gonna start right about here with the purple. Uh, maybe down almost to the notch in his nose, you know, where his nose bumps out like that. And then I'm gonna bring that purple straight up into the blue. And I'll kind of go carefully against that edge there. And then I'm gonna blend my purple right into that blue that's still kind of wet. You can bring the purple blue down, bring the purple up. If you need to get a little more purple on your brush, you can do that and just kind of blend it in. And I may put a little more purple over here in this part of the blue and just blend it in so that it looks like the purple just kind of melds right into that blue, sort of like a sunset. All right. All right. A few I'm, people are having a few de technical difficulties, so just if you're struggling a little bit, if the video's stuttering or anything for you, uh, try refreshing the page. And if that's not working, just know we're starting on the background with color number one, the dark blue at the very top. And we're letting that fade into purple, which I assume is color number two? Yes. Yes, color number two. So if you're trying to catch up, that's what we've done so far, and always know this is going to be on YouTube later, and you can watch it there if the live isn't working for you. Are we moving along fine? Yeah, it's fine okay. on our end, so okay. just keep refreshing the page if it's not working for you guys. I understand that there are billions of people out there using um, Facebook and using the internet now, and so some people's uh, um, internet is kind of slow. That's the problem we were having on our home internet. Um, and so that's why we moved here. We've got a much speedier internet here at the shop um, than we do at home. All right. Now, if you're ready, if you've got your purple blended in, and while it's still wet, now this time I did kind of wash my brush out a little bit because we're going to a color that's a little bit different. This is color number three. It's called shrimp. It's sort of that melony pale orange sort of color. And I'm gonna come down to about here and I'm gonna start working my way up into the purple. 
Now when you're blending colors, you can just keep going back and forth. You know, if you get a little too much orange, then add a little, then, you know, clean off your brush and go back into your purple. If you get a little too much purple, clean it off and go back into orange. And just give it kind of a blended spot right there. We're moving sort of from our night sky down into our um, sunset. And I'm feeling like I've lost a little of my purple here, so I'm going to go back and add a little purple back in. And just bring it in like that. And I wanted a little more sunsetty than sky, so I left a larger bit of the shrimp color there. Um, but you, you know, if you'd like to have more sky, deep dark sky and less of this sunsetty color, then you feel free to do that. I've come up here mm, about, about a breath, brush width before we get to the nostrils on that nose. I know it's a little odd for you painting upside down. Um, but it's easier to reach things on the right side of the canvas with if you're right-handed. Now, if you were left-handed, you may have wanted to keep it straight up and down. Hope I haven't confused you too much. Now I'm going to um, move on to color number four, which is this pretty pink. It's called Flamingo. And I'm going to go down about right even with his nostrils is where I'm going to start my pink there. And remember to use that flat edge of your brush, take it right up to the edge of his nose and spread that pink out. I need a little bit more there and I'm gonna carry it right up into that shrimpy color. There we go, now that blends beautifully, doesn't it? Those colors are so close together that they're very easy to blend. And I hope everybody's um, moving right along and I'm not racing way too ahead of you. Comment to Melissa if you've got any issues. And then the next color I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on over to uh, number six. I know I'm skipping that yellow number five, but I'm going to skip to the green. It's called Desert Cactus and it's color number six. And this one, I'm gonna go from the bottom up. And I'm gonna use that yellow after we get the grass painted. I'm gonna use that yellow to kind of blend it into where that pink is. Kind of to give a glow to the top of the green. Now with this, I need to switch to a smaller brush because I wanna get this little spot in here um, this is between his nose and his chest. And remember when you're doing detail work, you kind of want to brace that wrist on the edge of your canvas. I realize your canvas is kind of wet now, but you know what? You're not a real artist if you don't get paint all over your hands. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's very true. That's the way I am always. Today, I managed to, while I was squirting out black paint, it hit the palette and sprayed all over the front of my apron and completely covered up the cut and paste logo that's on the front of my apron. So, you know, that's what it's like when you're working with paint. All right, now I've got that green on there and I've left a little border between the green and the pink. And I think for this, I'll switch to my medium sized brush because I don't need that great big brush right now. And I'm gonna go find color number six that yellow, and I'm just going to brush a little in between the pink and the green. All right, and it'll kind of, you might want to wipe your brush off in between strokes because you don't want to get the pink too far down into that green, but you do kind of want to blend the yellow into the top of the green. That's kind of where the sun is hitting that grass. I'm going to do a little bit over there. Just a tiny bit above his nose. All right. Melissa, could you get me a Q-tip? Because I made a boo-boo. They're right over there. It's very nice to have a helper here because I don't have to get up and run off when I forget to bring something over. You are almost out. I am. Now, y'all, I've showed you this trick before, but if you're new to me, take your Q-tip, get the tip of it wet, and just stroke it right along there. 
Now, this is bare canvas underneath that, so it won't all come up, but that's okay because we'll be painting over that with brown later. All right, and that cleans it up. Now, I'm gonna flip mine back over, and you can see what your sunset looks like. And if you need to brush things out a little bit, you can, um, you can take your brush once it's dry, kind of wipe off the paint, and just smooth out anything that you think doesn't look quite right because your paint will stay wet for a while. Now, I think later on, I'm probably gonna go over, because um, some of that purple is not sticking there. Sometimes when you layer a lot of thick paint, um, it will uh, start to peel off the paint layer below it. So I think what I'll do for that purple uh, is wait until the end, and then I will go back and um, add a little more color to it at that time um, because I think that that uh, is a good it makes it easier once it's dry um, there's something in the printer I need you to run up yeah. and grab for me sorry I'm sending Melissa off on another chore now remember always keep your brushes when you are not using them once they have paint on them they need to stay in the water and that's true when you're crafting in the shop um, if you're doing summer camps with us anything like that always keep your brushes that way we lose so many brushes because paint dries out and we don't want to do that. So let's compare. How are we looking here? I think we're looking pretty good. And um, remember the anything up here, you know, see how I didn't all go in there because he's going to have all this floofy hair up in the front. Um, you kids might not remember him, but your parents probably remember there used to be a model named Fabio and he had the most amazing hair. So we've decided this horse's name is Fabio because he has amazing amazing hair um, now we are going to um, paint this horse's face now and we're going to go all the way down here we're going to cover up everything with this face okay um, don't worry about what's going to be white later because we'll paint that over top afterwards so i'm going to use my big brush to do this we're going to paint um, the one thing I am going to paint around is I'm kind of going to paint around his eye, kind of leave an almond shape there around that eye because I don't want to try to have to go back with too much white paint there. Um, but everything else, um, you're going to use color A, which is your darker brown. It's called coffee bean. Um, your other brown is kind of has a little more reddish tint to it, uh, and that should be color B. So you're going to work with color A, and we're just going to cover his face. Now, Coffee Bean is a fairly thin paint and it will leave a lot of brush strokes, but that's okay because we're gonna be doing so much layering today. Um, when you're doing your edges like that, remember you can take that smooth, flat edge of the brush right up to there and just brush it on down. I like this color um, because it is a little bit sheer and um, transparent, so um, it will, show the lines like where we're going to paint his nostrils later i'm going to angle this so it's more canvas and less your nose yes that's we're probably a little a bit idea. of your nose yeah, yeah. there we go so i have to <laughs> lean over thank you melissa yep we're just getting a bit too much nose and hair and just brush it around now i'm going to kind of make i'm going to make a little sort of oh an almond shape around that eye and just leave that alone and don't paint brown there okay it doesn't have to be exact we'll be doing white over that later oh and this paint is very paint um brush strokey do you see that but that's okay because a horse's fur has a lot of texture to it it's not perfectly smooth all right is it called fur on a horse or is it called hair it's, it's hair. called hair okay yeah i guess so horse hair um so we're doing that face but remember we're also going down here so you don't have to worry too much about getting that edge perfect um, but do look and see where you're getting um streaky bits and we'll try not to um leave too many brush strokes but that's okay remember we can always come back and do a second coat and so we're doing everywhere but the eyes and the hair essentially yes and we'll be adding a lot of texture to a lot of this later, so it won't matter um, if you're seeing brush strokes there. And 
And remember, comment, give us, um, tell us to speed up or slow down. Well, don't, don't tell us to speed up because that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell us to slow down if we're just getting way ahead of you. And this line over here, don't worry too much about it being a perfect line because you know what his hair looked like over there, Mr. Fabio hair. Oh dear, there is a little bit of blue paint on this um, from where I was painting uh, sunset earlier, and it's starting to wander up my uh, horse there. Got a little blue right in there. Maybe he's got a smudge of dirt on him. You know, horses when they're out in the muddy weather, uh, they get a little smudge on them like that. And then I'm just going to go and kind of using long brush strokes, just spread out my paint a little. I'm not adding more paint right now. I'm going from the top and bringing it down just so that I don't have a ton of brush strokes. All right. Now, this is where we're gonna start adding a little texture to this horse, okay? Um, do you see um, the line right here it's right um, up his chin, sort of. Will you do that a little slower just because the video is kind of glitchy for some people sometimes? Yes, so. right up here, you can still see your line there. And what I'm gonna have you do is take your skinny brush and I'm gonna have you dip it in your A uh, brown, that very first brown we're using, and then I'm gonna have you dip just a little bit into your black, all right? And you're just going to um, use a little bit of paint here. I know this line isn't very pretty yet, but it will get prettier as we go. All right, and you're just going to follow that line up there. And then there's this little line here on his chest. And then I want you to dry your brush off completely. Okay, same brush. You don't have to wash it, but you're going to dry it off. And I want you to just gently sh brush that paint in so you just have a little bit of shading there. And then we'll brush down here too. And later we're going to do some outlining around the outside of the horse's face so that'll smooth it in too. And we'll brush over it with a little brown paint in a little while. Um, all right. Then we're also going to take um, some of your black paint. Let's, let's use this skinny brush again. And we're going to use um, the black paint. And remember, when you're using these small brushes, don't put a ton of them in there. And then what we're going to do is paint the inside of his ears. So it's this part. And you can just use your brush to outline the edge. It's okay to go back and get more paint. You, you don't want to have way too much. Am I sticking my nose into the camera no, you're too okay. much? Okay. So I've got a little black there. And then we're going to do, it's this outer bit right here. As always, guys, let me know if you have any questions. If we're going too fast, too slow, just let me know if we have any problems. And then, um, guys, I know I always say I won't do this, but my uh, brown paint is still pretty wet. And if I start painting white over his nose, that is just going to smear everywhere. So I'm going to stop real quickly and blow dry. And if you all have a blow dryer, you can do that too. I 
I would play elevator music for you guys, but we don't have anything that's like not copyrighted I could pull up immediately, so. <laughs> y'all it was mostly important to get that nose dry because that's where we're going to put some white paint and I did not want that white just blending in with the brown all right I'm now going to use my medium brush and I'm going to switch to my white paint and we're going to kind of I'm going to show you the little picture they give you here I'm going to kind of paint just a circle all around here on the bottom of his nose. It's not a perfect circle. It'll have that little lump there. And we will be doing some more outlining later, so don't worry about that. You know, if your edges aren't perfect. And we're going to kind of come up to where, see where the nose comes in right here? That's where the top of that circle is going to go. And we'll probably have to do more than one coat. So what we'll do is, you know, we'll paint the circle and then we'll paint a few more little designs and then we'll come back to it later and maybe add a second coat as it dries. Because again, you don't want to sit here and listen to me blow dry over and over and over again. Um, and then we're going to do this little shape up the front of his nose. And it's kind of a diamond shape at the top. So I'm going to use my brush to kind of sketch in what I want to do. Um, but it's completely up to you if you don't want that or if you want, uh, you know, sort of an uneven shape. Um, Melissa used to ride a horse that had this, he, he had a diamond like that with a weird white chunk over to the side too. Um, so every horse is different. You can kind of use your brush to go straight up there with a little bit of the white paint and say, hmm, I think the top of my diamond will be right there. And then I'll kind of come down here and here, and then maybe make it join down like that. And see there, I've sort of roughed it out. And then I'll go in and add more white paint. And again, this may not cover perfectly the first time, so we'll go back later and add a little more white paint to it. So I've got my general design there, but it looks a little wonky. So um, I'm just going to come back over it and just smooth out those edges till I like the way it looks. Now again, that's not quite enough white paint, um, but if I try to go over it right now, it's just going to get mushier and mushier and we don't want that. We want it to stay nice and white like that. So let's see how that looked compared to my other one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we're going to leave that for now. Um, I'm going to give you guys a second to catch up. We are still live and uh, no new comments, so okay. we are good. Okay. Um, I think our next step should be to add the brown that's going around his little ears up here. So the black is sort of the inside of his ears. I'm going back to color A, that coffee bean brown, and I'm gonna kind of bring the brown paint up like that. And this may be another place where we have to go back over it. Coffee bean is not very, um, the word is opaque. You all know what opaque means? Opaque means you can't see through it. Well, this paint you can definitely see through. And I'm gonna put a little brown right there near the top and I bring it all the way up to the top like that. And that is definitely somewhere where I'm gonna go back and do a second coat of brown later. Um, and then we're gonna go like this. Oh, y'all ignore that phone ring and we are. <laughs> we are closed. <laughs> yep. And you know it's probably somebody trying to sell me something. <laughs> Not is. somebody really. Um, wanting to talk to us. All right, and then let's see. We are going to, I'm gonna do a line of brown 
right along this edge there just to sort of smooth back sorry about that guys they tell me that it's the problem of way too many people out there using facebook live at once so i apologize um, if you're joining us from youtube we will have stitched these two together so you won't even know um, let's see let's go back and talk about what we just did we put a line of brown right here we outlined the ears we did the the filled in that part but then did a line of brown there we did a little line of brown there around here and up that side uh, we don't have very many here so give okay. it a few seconds while people find us again sorry guys we think the phone ringing cut us off um but we're back Okay, we have about as many as we had before, so I think we're okay. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. I have no idea what's going on. Facebook Live is hinky, and uh, <laughs> there are so many people using it that it really is making it tough for some people. Um, but um, I just did this little spot of the ear. I outlined the other side of the ear. You won't see a line for that. I just did that, and then I filled in here and outlined that part of the ear. And then I did a line of brown right here and some right there. And let people catch up for just a minute. All right, we are going to start blending at this point, okay? So I recommend um, you can use like the cap of some of your paints if you want to or if you've got a little plastic plate paper plate you could do that now when you blend colors um, I would recommend don't blend them into the color there because you may want to come back and use that brown later so take your brown color number uh, a and take a couple of little scoops and put it over here wash your brush out and you're going to take a scoop of your white and put it right next to it now, when you blend colors together, don't spread them way, way, way out because then it's just going to dry up. You just want to bring the color in right really close together and keep it in a nice big blob right there in the middle. And we're going to get kind of a Oh, uh, well, I turn. I managed to turn the camera around, so that's fun. <laughs> oh, okay. I think we're okay. <laughs> sorry, you briefly got like my chin oh. in my chest. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I do not know what we need to do about this. We are. We have ordered a webcam. Uh, it left China and went to Hong Kong. It's now left Hong Kong and it's in LA waiting on customs. So hopefully we'll have our web camera then, and I think it'll be a lot easier to um, film from that. So be patient with us. All right, now we've blended our some of our darker brown, our A, with some white, and we've made a color that's kind of like my very light hot cocoa. And we're just gonna give ourselves a base here of our hair. So right about here, using this light color. And then we're gonna go and do this swoopy little bit here. And then we're going to kind of do some tufts of hair that stick up like this. So kind of go pshoo, 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 kind of like that. All right. And don't worry if it doesn't cover all of that um, blue there because we're going to work on that later with lots and lots and lots of more layers of paint. Okay. So then let's just get the rest of the top of the mane here. Um, get some light color out here. And you all, this is where you're going to get creative. And you see, I don't know if you can tell, but I got a little streak of white in there. And that's a good thing. Go right up to that ear and then come on out and just brush this out. His hair is just so fabulous.
All right, I did not blend enough of that color, so I'm gonna take a little more of my dark brown, put it over here, wipe off my brush, get a little scoop of white and blend it in. It doesn't matter if it's not the exact same color um, because, you know, we're trying to get as much of different colors as we can. Yep, and I've got some streaks of white in there and I like that. We're just blending them out here. I'll try to get that covered. We want to have a base to start adding a ton of different shades of brown into. So I want to get this part of the canvas. How are we doing, Melissa? Are we still alive? Yes, we're still live. Um, quite a few of our friends were just a little behind, so I think okay. a lot of people will watch us later on YouTube, but for those okay. of us still with us, let us know if you need us to slow down or anything or if um, you have any questions. All right, so I've gone down oh, maybe about half of the canvas there with this sort of light color. Um, and then um, we're gonna switch to um, some our smaller brush. So put your medium brush in the water, get your smaller brush out, and this is where we're gonna get creative with lots of streaks of color. We want, when I talk about streaks, you're gonna have, you know, like you do, about a third of your brush covered. Sorry, I'm poking my brushes with my elbow there. And you're gonna use that brush to add little lines of color like this. And just keep adding and make it kind of flow. Maybe a little bit there and a little there and his swoopy hair there, add some little swoops to it. Now, if you hold just the tip of your brush, you'll get a really light line like that. Um, if you smash your brush down, you'll get a thicker line like that. So you can kind of do a combination of both. And let's do a few more swoopies right up here. You know, to start covering up some of that blue there and see how it's starting to really cover up with that little fluff of hair that he's got going there. All right, and then I think it needs more colors. So we're gonna switch to color B, which is that sort of um, little bit reddish brown. And I'm gonna add more swoops of color I want to layer a whole lot of different shades to just give him a really interesting look there. All right, um, I'm gonna let people catch up just a minute. Are we still moving? We're still alive. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is um, paint the rest of this here because that's part of his body, but I want it to sort of blend in with his mane and um, we will keep adding and blending. I think we're gonna add a little more white. We're gonna put in a little black just for some accent. Um, but I wanna start bringing down um, this darker brown onto his um, body here. And I am gonna use that dark brown color I have, but I think I'm, I'm gonna load up my brush with the dark brown, but then I'm gonna stick the corner of it in that lighter brown that I made. And just start brushing down here and see how I get that kind of interesting. I've got a little bit of two colors going on there and it gives a little shading to that. We are definitely gonna have to get more coats of that brown on him. You may want to add a little more brown paint to his body just to give it a little more 
um, get it a little darker. Brush that all down. Okay, now we have a fairly good coat um, for adding some more detail to it. And at this point, I'm going to have you switch to your medium brush, and I want you to dip it in your uh, color A there, and then I want you to dip the tiniest corner of it in the white, all right? So you've got just a touch of white on that brush. And then I want you to just start blending along here. So a little brown, touch the corner into the white, and then just start blending along here. And that gives a little shading to this edge here. All right. Now we're not done with this mane, don't worry, we've still got more to do. Um, but I'm thinking, yeah, my nose and my, what do they call that, a blaze, I think it is. Um, they're good and dry. So I'm going to go back and add a little white to my blaze. Um, now my white has a little tiny touch of brown in the corner um, because that's where I dipped my brush in. But So I'm going to dip my brush into the part of the white that I didn't get brown paint on. And I'm just going to add a second coat. And you can see that just covers that brown so much better. And then go straight up here and do a little bit of a second coat. Again, we're back with white, fixing our blaze. If you want to, you can always wait till the end to add that. All right. And you can see that just already looks so much better. And I hope we're all moving along fine here. So far we're good. Okay. We're still moving on the camera. We're still moving over here. Now, this is one thing where the body of my horse is kind of wet, so I'm not going to be able to brace my wrist really well there. Um, but I, you can blow dry yours if you want to so that you can. But just give yourself um, a little bit of white paint here, kind of in this almond shape like right here, because we want to have some white for the background for our eye. And then we're going to let that dry, and we need to make our, um, our mane even more fabulous. So right now, I'm going to add just a little bit of white to the edge of my tiny brush, and I'm not going to press down hard. You see on some of these I pressed down so it made it thicker, and I don't want it to be thicker. I want to add tiny little accents of white. So I'm just using the tip of my brush, not pressing down. You can see I'm holding it up in the air and I'm just giving it white highlights. You can take that white right on top of some of the darker ones. And when you paint some of these, give them a little flare like, you know, doesn't have to be a straight line. Give it a little whoosh like the wind is blowing in his hair. Do some of you all have names for these horses yet? And I'm gonna go right down here. I've added some white there. I'm gonna go back. I don't think I had enough of this uh, reddish brown, B. I don't think I had enough down in here. So I'm going to add a little more to that mane, kind of coming down here. I'm starting to kind of like that. What do you all think? I think maybe a tiny bit more white right there would be neat. All right. Then I think 
a tiny bit of black would do the same thing, give it even more dimension. Tiny dot on the end of your paintbrush in the black. Again, don't press down, just add a little black with the tip of your brush. So you just have tiny amounts like that. And if you feel like you put too much on it, you can always layer a lighter color on top of it to fade it out. That's true. So just touch it with a little, I'm not gonna do a ton of black, but I just feel like it adds one more layer of dimension. He's got so much color in him like that. And you can see most of my lines kind of started I don't have a definite line between his body and his mane, but you can see I sort of started many of my brush strokes kind of along that line there. How are we liking our manes? Are they looking good? Don't worry about our ears right now. We're going to do a little more detail work on those ears so that they'll show up even better. We're going to do some work on the eye and make that look better. At this point, I'm going to switch to my medium brush, wash and dry it really well, have a little sip of coffee. No, no, you can't have coffee. And then I'm going to go back to um, color A, that darker brown, because remember how we talked about that face not being very uh, dark, because this is a very transparent paint. It's not a very... Uh, it's not very opaque. That's two words we use a lot with paints. Opaque means it's hard to see through. Transparent means you can see through it. And this was a color that you can see through. Now, I'm going to take this color A and paint right over that black line that I did to kind of soften it so that that black line now becomes shading, not just a sharp black line. So you can kind of do that sometimes. You can put a color, a darker color underneath a lighter color, and then when you paint over it, it <coughs> softens it. Some of you who did the mother and uh, the mom and baby turtle with me, you know, we we um, had traced the lines um, with a black marker, and then we painted right over them with green, and so they were uh, we could still see our lines, but they looked more like dark green than they did black. So that's what we're doing here. We want to soften that up and show where his chin is, but not have it be just an ugly black line. All right. So I'm just kind of going along here. Remember, um, you know, we can put our brush right up against that edge and bring it up. And don't worry if you need to go back and add more mane. You know, if we need to put a swoosh right there, you can always go back and put another swoosh there. I'm going to go right up here. Add a little bit there. And I think that looks a lot better, don't you? It just really covers up the brown paint better. And then um, when you're ready, we're going to go back with our tiny brush and we're going to start doing some little um, detail work um, to just show um, some finer outlines on this horse. So again, tiny amounts of paint and um, whew, no matter where I put my brush, I'm going to set my hand in that mane. So I'm going to turn it sideways because that's easier for me and I'm going to kind of outline this eye. I'm just going to give it a little dark outline there. And then I'm going to have this little part here, this little front of the eye is going to hang down a little hot farther. And then I'm going to color in the whole eye black, okay? And don't worry about the center of the eye, we'll add more to that later. But that's the kind of look you want. Now, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to go back with my tiny brush and that brown, that A, color A brown, and I'm just going to go right along that edge and just blend a little of that black in like that, okay? And the same thing above it, I want to get that brown right, oh, <laughs> don't do what Miss Lori does, do what she says. I stuck it in the black and I meant to put it in the brown. That's okay. We're just going to add a little brown 
along that edge, just barely touching into the black. All right. I like the way that looks. And we'll add a dot of white to it later at the very end, okay? Um, and if you're like me, if, if your arm just keeps sitting in that mane, that's okay. You can turn your, your canvas around. Um, I'm going to paint down the side of his face, so I am going to turn it upside down now. Um, and I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to add a black line that goes down this side of the face and down to about here below his nose. So I've got it upside down because I don't want to stick my arm in that mane. And if you need to do that too, you flip yours upside down. But we're going to go right along this edge and you're using your tiniest brush. You're using just a tiny amount of paint and I'm not pressing down hard with the brush. I'm just using the tip of it like that. And I'm going to follow the outer edge. Oh, I got a little thick there. That's okay. And I'm going to go right down to about there. Okay. And that's as far as I need to go on that part. I am going to turn him right back up to do his nose because I think that nose is a little hard um, to do. Um, he's got two little nostrils and they're not big round nostrils. They're kind of Let's show you here. <laughs> They're a little bit bean shaped, kind of like that. And we probably put so much paint on, you can't see those dark lines anymore, but that's okay. Um, we'll use our tiny brush and just a little paint. And see where this nose kind of notches out there? That's where one of the nostrils is gonna go, kind of just like that. All right, kind of like a, kind of like a bean. And then we're going to do the same thing over on this side, but a little bit bigger. And he's turned away from you. That's why one side seems a little bigger than the other. Now I feel like mine's a little too big, so I'm going to make this one a tiny bit bigger. There we go. And then we're going to do a little line right on the outside there. There we go. All right. Um, if you all are ready to move on a little bit with me, I'm gonna do a little bit. I feel like his ears have totally gotten lost in there, haven't they? A little bit. Yeah, and that happens. That's part of what we do. So what I'm going to do, again, take that brown, put a scoop over here where you were mixing before. And this time I want to put a, a lot of white in there because I want to make this a really light brown, okay? And just stir it around and make it even lighter than what you had before. Oh, I'm getting too far out. Try to keep your paint all kind of in a blob in the center. And it doesn't have to be perfectly blended if it's got a little bit of streakiness in it. That gives more texture to your painting. All right, then go into that super light brown with your little light brush. And just, again, you're not pressing down. You're just using the tip. And just do a little bit of an outline. See how that ear just suddenly comes back? We know he's there. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Now you're not going to outline the black. You're going to outline this brown part that was out here. And then come around here. Now if it doesn't show up enough, take the tiniest bit of white and just go in there with it. There, that gives a little bit better to have that little bit of white there. Oh, 
I went a little too high on that, didn't I? Take your little Q-tip if you ever do and just swipe that up. Look, all fixed. All right, now I've got some spots where I feel like I didn't cover my paint very well. So I'm gonna go back and add some swoops, like right there, see that? That just felt like it wasn't very swoopy. And then, you know, add a little more color, a little more texture if you need to, if you feel like you're missing some of this reddish brown, you know, like right there. I love that reddish brown and I wanted to get more of that in there. All right, you can touch up anything you like. Um, if you want to give a little shading um, to the to right along here, along where his mane attaches, you could use that light brown that you just made, but wipe most of it off. You know, put it on your brush, wipe it off, and then just very gently stroke right here, and you'll get kind of a little bit of a shading right along his back. Blend it in like that. If you feel like there's some spots where the brown just didn't cover very well, or if you stuck your elbow in it like I did. Um, <laughs> well, I didn't stick my elbow. I think I stuck my wrist in there. Um, but you can go back and touch him up a little bit, add him a little more color there. If you need more white on the nose, you can do that. And then the last thing we have to do is add just a little bit of a white dot where that eye is. And do you remember how we do the dots? We take the wrong end of our paintbrush, we dip it into our paint, and then we go right there in the middle. And now it looks a whole lot more like an eye, doesn't it? So what do we think? Now this one that I did looks a little different than the one I did before. Every time I did it, now the first time I did it, I actually used a darker brown and it covered up the lines so badly I couldn't see anything. So for you all, I wanted to use the slightly lighter one. Oh, now I see something that I did before that was kind of neat on this eye. Um, take your tiny brush, add some white paint to your tiny brush, but then take it off. So you just have the barest amount of white paint there and then go right along here. Now, wipe the paint completely off your brush and use it to kind of blend that in. That just gives a little accent to that eye and makes it stand out a little bit better. So totally dry brush and you can blend that in like that. All right. What do we think? Are we liking it? Now, again, if you struggle to keep up with us today, if I was going too fast and you didn't tell me, um, then you can always go back and watch this on YouTube. Um, we, are, we are finished. This is what we're going to do today. If you feel like you need to add a little more color, uh, say on his face, or you need to, um, like I'm going to add a little more purple there in my background, you can certainly do that after we're done. Um, I'm not going to make you stay here and watch. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us, and next week we're painting the cat, so I hope you'll join us for that. I don't think I have the cat sample with me today, um, but that one's going to be a fun one. It's a more graphic one. Um, it doesn't look at all like a real cat, and we're going to get to get real creative with that. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, if you need to, go back to YouTube, and we'll see you soon.